All right, so um, let's take um, example. Uh, these are very, very good examples. So I think that uh, are helpful or will be helpful for understanding of uh, the ideas of circles and uh, lines in total. So the first example is that if you have a line, uh, if you have two lines, um, 3x plus 4y minus 10 is equal to 0. And you have another line, 4x minus 3y minus 30 is equal to 0. At tangents to the circle at minus 1, 2, and 6, 3, can we find the equation of the circle? So this, this uh, problem that you have been posed actually is if you have a circle and then you have a tangent, so let's call this uh, line one, and then you have another tangent, let's call this line two. Uh, can we find the equation of the circle? And how do we go about finding the equation of the circle when we know um, the tangent? So the idea is very simple. So because you know that uh, line one is a tangent, uh, it means that you can find a perpendicular line to the center, okay? A perpendicular, you can find uh, the radius, uh, the radius in a certain way, and then also find the radius in the line of line two to the circle uh, or to the circle, and then use ideas of perpendicularity and then gradients to come to this idea of uh, finding the circle. So how do you go about it? So if you take your first line, which is line one, or I call it line one, is three x, um, three x. So three x plus four y minus ten is equal to zero. So this is your first part here. Then we can write this uh, making y a subject, and then if you make y a subject in this case then it means that you can also then write um, uh, minus three over four x plus five over two, where the gradient of this line tangent one is minus three over four. And if you know the gradient of a line one, then it means that we can immediately find the, the gradient of the radius using the idea of perpendicularity. Okay, so it means that because we know that the gradient of uh, the radius one, the product of the gradient of the line one, and then the radius one should equal to minus one. Since we know the gradient of line one, we can then find the gradient of radius one to be four over three. And so if we go to line two, and we take the equation of the line of line two, okay, then we can also make y the subject, and then there we have the gradient now given by four over three. And then since again, in this case, we know uh, the gradient of line two, it is easier to write. So here in this case, you have, uh, you, have your line, you have your circle, you have your tangent, which is line two. And then now we try to find, we, we assume that there is a circle, with the radius two. So now we know the equation of the line, we write it out and then the gradient of, uh, which is the radius two uh, is perpendicular to um, the gradient of L1, L2. So we can write the gradient of the of radius R2 to be minus three over four. And then in that case, you can write the equation of the line with respect to radius one Right, then we call this radius one. You can write the equation of the line because you know the gradient. So you know a point, right? You know a point here, by which, which is a point of tangency. You can write the equation of radius one. Similarly, because you know the point of tangency for, for line two, you can write the equation of the red, equation of the line for the line R2. So here, if you come here, now you know that point of tangency for radius one or for line one is minus one and two, right? So, and then we know the gradient of R1. 
So the gradient of R1, this gradient one is four over three. So we can write the equation of the line for R1, so we just one for the line R1, which is three y minus four x is minus seven is equal to zero. Similarly, we can do for line two. We know the we know the gradient of line two. We know the the gradient of the radius of uh, line two as well. And then we can we know the point of tangency, which is six three. So we can write the equation of the line R two at six three, given by three x plus four y minus thirty is equal to zero. So now we have two equations of the line R1 for equation, which is for R1, and then another equation for R2. So we can solve these two equations simultaneously, and then that will give us that will give us the point of intersection. By solving R1 and R2 simultaneously, we derive the point of intersection. Point of intersection, which is nothing else by the center, right? Which will give us the center of the circle. So we have x is x is two, and then y is six. If you solve these two equations simultaneously, if you solve this one, and then this one simultaneously, then you get x to be six, and y to x to be two and y to be six. Then of course, um, if you know the center of a circle, if you know the center of a circle, in this case, you said it's two, six. And then we know a point here. Uh, one of the points was um, six, three. The other point here was minus one, two. So if you take any of these points, right? You can, then that gives you the radius. From the center, then we can compute the radius. So the radius is giving taking two six the center, and then p one, right? P one, then we get the radius to be five. Of course, if you take also the center and p two, you will get the same uh, number five. Okay, so now you know the if, so now we can write the equation of the circle with center two six as x minus two squared plus y minus six squared is equal to five squared. And then if you expand this, you finally get position of the circle. So it's, it's a very good exercise for you to understand um, how to derive an equation of a circle when you are giving two lines. The next question is, if you have a circle, which is 4x squared plus 4y squared plus 12x minus 2y minus 22 is zero. You can find the point E near to the line. And so if you have, basically, if you have a circle, right, a circle of the center, and then you have a line here, you have a line here. The question is, can we find the line, then can we find the point which is close to this. Okay, so we 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 would go through some uh, ideas that we've spoken about. So first, you must write, uh, you must find the center of the circle. So first, find the center of the circle. This is the first step. So if you have four x squared plus four y squared minus plus twelve x minus minus two y minus twenty two is zero, then you can easily find the center. Right, you can find the center by really um, expanding and adding uh, how this technique that we use. So you introduce this guy, you introduce this guy, and then you add them here as well. And then this gives you, this gives you x plus three over two squared plus y minus one over four squared is equal to nine over two squared. So the center is nothing but minus three over two and then one over four. And the radius is given by nine over two. So next, we, we have to find the equation of the line 
which is perpendicular to the line L1, which is given, which was given initially. But now we know the center of our circle. We know its radius. So it's possible, it's very, we can easily write the equation of a line from the center that touches uh, the line initially that we were given as 8x minus 4y plus 73 is equal to zero. So already from this line, we can write, we can write from this line here, the radius, uh, the, the, the gradient, the slope of this line. So the slope of this line is given by, if we write it out, we have y is equal to 2x plus 73 over 4, and then the slope is given by 2. This guy, this here is the slope. So if you know the slope of this line, then it's very quickly we can write the slope of any line that is perpendicular to this other line. So in that sense, even if we do not know the line, you can already, if it is perpendicular, then let's call it um, MR, right? So that the product of ML, so L is this guy and R is this guy, right? R is this guy. So the slope of ML and MR is minus one. And since we know ML to be two, then MR is nothing else but minus one over two. And then with that, we can write the equation of the line, right? Equation of this line R, because now we know the slope and we know a point on that line. So we can write the equation of the line because the center is a point on that line R and the slope is minus one over two. So we can write the equation of the line is one over four, which is y minus y1 equal to m minus x minus one. So here, our y1 is one, our x minus three over two. The slope is minus one over two. So if you make your substitution, then you have this equation of the line. So this is the equation of the line, right, of line R which is a line that goes through the center and is perpendicular to the line which was given initially, which is line L. So now the question is that, can we find the point of intersection of the circle and the line, right? Can we find the point of intersection? That is this P, X, Y. So that is the point which is nearer to the line L1, the line L given. So because we know the equation of the line R, and then we know the equation of the circle. We can substitute, right? So we can substitute. I should put here. We can substitute. So substitute two into one, right? So where this is two and where this is one. So substitute two into one. If you do that substitution, then you can derive finally a quadratic equation of this form, and you can solve for x, and you have two values of x. So if you have x1 and x2, then you cannot, you also have y1 and y2. And that gives us two points. So P1, which is x1 and y1, right? x1 and y1, and then P2, is x2 and y2. So if we ask ourselves which of these points is closer, right? Then we need to use which of the points is closer to the line, and we need to use the distance of a point to a line. And the distance of a point to a line we know is given by ax1 plus by1 plus c, right? All of our square root of ax a squared plus b squared. So in this case, our point P1, if we go back, our point P1, let me write it out. P1, we said was equal to um, 0 0.8281, and then Y1 was minus 1.4141, right? So if you take this, then we know our A, A is 8, B is minus 4, and C is 73. We can make your substitutions. 
And then you see that when you make your substitutions, the distance of P1 to the line and as well as P2 to the line are the same, is equal. So this is 4951, 0 0.7476 as P2. And then when you check, you see that the distance of the line to P1 is equal to the distance of the line to P2. And this is how we, we start, uh, we solve um, problems like this.